Uh, today, oh look, we're almost done. Because the next couple of weeks we're going to be spending some time in Revelation. We've got some crafts planned out for Revelation. So when you come over the next couple of weeks, you'll see some of those crafts that we want to do for you guys. We're up to Jude, verse 60, uh, number 65 in the Bible. Number 65. Who remembers how many books there are? Simon, you're the first one. 66 books in the Bible. So we're almost done. This is the second last book in the Bible. And it's a letter as well. That's why it's got somebody's name on there. Jude. Who knows what this is short for? What name is Jude short for? Want to guess? Judas. Judas. All right. And you think Judas? You mean the Judas that hung himself? He betrayed Jesus? Did Judas write a letter? No. <laughs> He's not the only one that has the name Judas. Just like, you know, you may not be the only one that has your name. You know, we know a few Simons, don't we? We know a few. We know some Atticuses. I only know one Atticus. You. But I'm sure there's more Atticuses. Are there other Mateus in the world? There are. See? So, this Jude, or this Judas, this is the half-brother of Jesus. You know, brother of James. Remember we learned James as well? Now, Jude is like Philemon. It's like those other letters that are just only one chapter. So it's a short, short letter from Jude. It's a very important one because what is he warning us? What's one thing Jude is warning us about in his letter? What do you think it is? Evil people. Evil people. That just means you can read. <laughs> evil people. Now, there are evil people out there that want to do nasty things to you. you know, and that's what this book is warning us about. Not only coming in and want to teach us a wrong gospel, you know, tell you that Jesus isn't God or Jesus didn't come in the flesh, Jesus didn't die for your sins. There's people that are trying to convince people of that. That's one way you can be evil. Another way you can be evil is you can do nasty things to the person themselves, you know, to your body and things like that. So I want to warn you about it today so that you know about it because there are people out there and they don't always look evil. Because when you think of an evil person, is this what you think about? You think, you think an evil person, he's wearing all black, he's got an evil moustache, he's giggling, he's got evil plans. That's what you think an evil person looks like, right? But you know what the truth is, kids? Not everybody that's evil looks like that. Sometimes people that are evil can be extended family. It can be, you know, maybe an older brother or sister even that is not doing right by the Lord. Or even somebody in church. Somebody that seems nice on the outside, but they got bad intentions on the inside. So sometimes when people are evil, they don't always show it on the outside. That's why you just need to be careful and just uh, notice when things are not seeming right. Okay, so Jesus says that they don't come, when somebody comes evil, they don't come in, shit, you know, in wolf's clothing. Like a wolf doesn't come in wolf's clothing and say, here I am, I'm a wolf. Sometimes they come and they, they come in sheep's clothing. So they sometimes will pretend to be nice. But then they do things or they say things that are not so nice. So this is why you've got to be aware. Okay, so you don't want to just not trust anybody because, of course, you give people the benefit of the doubt that they're nice. But when they start doing things that are evil, you need to be aware. Sometimes when the people want to do evil things, they don't always look like this. They do evil things, but then they pretend to be a nice person. So you have to be very careful about what people do. Okay, so don't just suspect everybody, but when the person that looks nice starts wanting to do things that are bad, that's what you have to be careful of. Look at what the Bible says here in Jude 4. Look, for there are certain men crept in unawares. What does this mean? Unawares means you don't notice them all the time when they creep in, when they come in, you don't know who they are. But look at what they do, who were before of old ordained to this condemnation ungodly men so we're talking about evil people right turning the grace of our god into lasciviousness what is this we're going to talk about this in a moment and denying the only lord god and our lord jesus christ so you see the person who's going to deny jesus christ 
doesn't always look like this, does he? Sometimes he looks nice, but then he starts making questions. Oh, is the Bible really God's word? Do you know Jesus didn't really do that, didn't really do this? That's when you know, oh, this person is an evil person who's trying to deny what Jesus Christ did for us. So you see, you can ask some questions afterwards, Mateo. So you need to be careful of evil people. They don't always look like this. Keep in mind, it's like Satan. He looks like an angel of light. Did you know that? He transforms himself into an angel of light. So sometimes when we think about Satan, you think about somebody with horns, a red one with a, with a pitchfork. No, that's not what he always looks like. That'll be too obvious, because if you saw Satan with a pitchfork, you think, that's Satan, I better stay away from him. But if he transforms himself into an angel of light, maybe you'll get tricked. You see, but you won't get tricked if you had it. Remember what we learned last week? How do you stop yourself from getting tricked? Who knows the answer? Timothy? Sorry? Trusting in Jesus. That's a good one too. Knowing the truth. That's exactly right. So if you know the truth, you're not going to get tricked. If somebody's going to come and try and lie to you, you're not going to get tricked, even if they don't look like this, even if they look like a nice person. Okay. Look at what these people do. Why have I got this picture up here? I'm going to show you, explain in a moment. Jude 8. Look at this. Likewise also these filthy dreamers defile the flesh, despise dominion and speak evil of dignities. Now sometimes these evil people, they're not always trying to teach you lies, but they're trying to do things to you that they shouldn't be doing. Okay, and one thing they try and do is they try and touch you in places that you shouldn't be touched by other people. You know? So where are some places that people try and touch you that you shouldn't be touched. Well, if you think about this picture here, these are some people that have not all their clothes on, right? This is a cartoon. But what is being covered here? All right, so here you've got your, this area covered, this area covered, and same with the girl, the back and on the front. And the girl also has her shirt covered as well. Right? Because there are certain places on your body that shouldn't be touched. But sometimes evil people come in and they try and touch you in those areas. Okay, and what are those areas? The back here and the front, on the girl in the well, as well, and also on the chest for a girl, right? Because girls have breasts and boys don't. So you have to be very aware of people that try and do that. And like I said, you need to remember they don't always look like this, right? Somebody that's trying to do evil things to you doesn't always look like this. Sometimes there's somebody that you know and they're pretending to be nice but then they're trying to do naughty things to you. Now if that ever happens, should you keep it a secret? No. That's something you have to always be careful of as well. If somebody does something to you and they say, shh, don't tell your parents. This is just between us. You have to be very careful of that person. If somebody ever tells you to keep secrets from your parents, you make sure you tell your parents, okay? Because you should never keep secrets from your parents, especially secrets like this. Because evil people do that, don't they? They want to touch you in places you shouldn't be touched. And you don't, you don't worry if you need to tell on somebody like that. You never, don't, don't you worry that you'll get in trouble. You won't get in trouble. If you tell any one of us at church, your parents, or if you tell me that somebody's doing something like that to you, you make sure that you're not, you're not scared. I won't, I won't be angry at you. You won't get in trouble. You know what? The person that's doing those things, they're going to get in big trouble. Okay? So we need to look out for one another. If you know somebody that is doing something like that, you don't keep it a secret. Okay? We need to make sure we expose these people. Why? Because they're trying to come in here unnoticed, unawares. Not only at church, they're trying to sometimes come in at your school, or, you know, around your family gatherings and things like that. Maybe you've got extended family, cousins, things like that that may be doing these things. You don't want to keep this a secret. If they say, don't tell anyone that they're touching you here and there, you make sure you tell somebody, okay? So I want to warn you about that. These are the sort of people in Jude, what we're learning about today, that's what one thing Jude is warning us about. Now, how... Is an evil person going to do this to you? They're not going to do it when everyone's watching, right? If somebody wants to do something evil, do you think they're going to do it where everyone else is? What do you think, Mateo? 
They're going to try and take you somewhere else, aren't they? And look at what it says here in Jude 19. These be they, look at here, he's trying to get away from the safety of everyone else's eyes, right? Because if you are around everyone else, guess what? You can see what's going on, can't you? But if they want to do something evil, right, to you, Matthew is exactly right. They're going to try and take you off somewhere else. So you need to be aware of these things. Look at this. These be they who separate themselves. What does it mean to separate? It means you get away from everyone else. Sensual. What does this mean? See, sensual when they're touching people in places they shouldn't be touched. Right? This is just only between mummies and daddies. Right? Not, not between adults and children, especially or older children and younger children. So you've got to remember, it's not always adults that are doing these things. Sometimes it's older children doing it to younger children as well. So you have to be careful. Maybe you know like a cousin that's like a teenager and they're doing things they shouldn't be doing as well. Who separate themselves, sensual, having not the spirit. Okay, so you need to be careful of people that try and separate themselves. Now, even at church, obviously I can't show you some examples at home, but let's say in the building here. What are some places that you can think of that they might try and separate themselves to do something evil? What do you think? Yeah, that's a very good one. So come, let's go have a bit of a walk, kids. I'll show you. Well, there's not many places here to hide, but let's say all the adults having lunch, you know, maybe they're not 100% paying attention. And maybe one day, an older child says, hey, Simon, let me show you something in the bathroom. And it's just you two. Is that something you should do? No, no see? So you don't want to go in there by yourself where nobody can see you. Can you why is there any, there's no reason why? Well, you have to know them very well, okay? So yeah, it's not always wrong necessarily to go off with somebody, but when they start wanting to tell you bad things or show you bad things, that's what you have to be careful of, right? So you don't want to just suspect everybody because it's good to have friends. You want to have some trust, but when they're trying to do evil things, that's when you have to be careful. What if they say, hey, you know, let me show you something inside the storeroom. Is that something you should follow them and go into? No. So you have to be careful when they want to show you. What about if they say, hey, let's go all the way to the other side of the park, just you and me, and I want to show you something that you, know, you shouldn't see. No. This is when you have to tell somebody. Okay? All right, let's go back and sit down. Okay, so anything, anything that needs to be, that can be shown in secret over there can be shown where everyone else is as well. So you just need to be smart about it. I'm not saying every time somebody takes you somewhere, you know, especially a kid, if you guys go off together, I'm not saying every time it's bad, but it depends what they want to show you, right? If they want to touch you in places that you shouldn't be touched, they want to show you things that you shouldn't see on their body, right? Or they're trying to tell you things that they don't want anyone to know. You need to be aware of that, okay? And make sure that they don't tell you to keep secrets from your parents. Because once somebody starts saying, don't tell mommy and daddy, you need to be careful of that, okay? Because they might be telling you something that you sh they shouldn't be telling you, okay? So remember, they don't always look like this, okay? So you have to think about what they're telling you and what they're trying to do. They might be trying to touch you in places that they shouldn't be touching you. Okay, you make sure you tell mummy and daddy. Okay, you won't be in trouble. So don't let them tell you that if you tell mummy and daddy you're going to get in trouble. We'll make sure you won't, you won't get in trouble. We'll make sure that person gets in trouble. Okay? And how are they going to do it? Okay, you're very smart, Mateo. They're going to try and separate themselves, aren't they? Separate themselves from everybody else. Now the last thing... So this, we're still talking about Jude. So that was the warning about evil people. But Jude finishes on a more positive note because it reminds us, see, this is an ungodly world we live in, right? So we need to keep ourselves from the ungodliness and we want to make sure we're saving people. What are we doing? We're saving people by fishes of men. So not only are we catching the fish out of the water, 
Remember, we're also saving people out of the fire, out of the fire of hell. When we tell people about Jesus, what does it say here? This is Jude 1, 23. Others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. Okay, so we need to tell people about Jesus so we can save them from the fire to come, which is hell. Because you know, if we don't believe on Jesus, there is going to be a punishment, but if we believe on Jesus, Jesus paid the punishment for us. 